lovely, lovely imps. Today, I have to do something special. And I don't like doing this very often. But today, I have to prostrate myself before you, okay? Sorry, I gotta stay within range of the microphone or you won't be able to hear me, okay? I have to bow down and beg for forgiveness, okay? I have to beg for forgiveness from the tumblords and tumblerinas. I have to beg forgiveness from the Onceler on Onceler fanship accounts. I have to beg forgiveness from the How to Train Your Dragon uh, erotic RP accounts. I have to beg forgiveness uh, from the uh, Guardians of Gahul uh, 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 Dungeons and Dragons mod club. I have to beg forgiveness from, uh, I don't know, whoever else out there, okay? And the reason that I have to do all of this is because I slandered your movie, okay? A couple of months ago, a movie came out that was called Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And at the time, a bunch of people kept annoying me about it. A ton of people were being really, really annoying about it. And they were like, and I'm not kidding you, there were a bunch of people who were like, this is the most beautiful film I've ever seen. I saw someone who was uh, the, the, the internet typing equivalent of like, crying onto the page like they're they probably needed to get a new keyboard because they were t they were crying about how uh, life-changingly beautiful the film was and while i still think that perhaps that was a little bit of an overreaction i still need owe an apology to the people that i roasted at that time because i just watched puss in boots the last witch wish and that movie slapped. It actually slapped, okay? Now, I'm gonna defend myself just a tiny bit. I have offered my apologies. I have humbled myself before you. You guys get to, uh, uh, you guys can, can uh, glomp and key smash and, uh, and hold up your sporks in victory, okay? Have your victory and whatever. But I'm gonna defend myself just a tiny, tiny bit, which is to say, it's a Puss in Boots movie, okay? I, I, can you really blame me after everything that they have done to that poor cat uh, for me saying, I am not all that amazed or in, I'm not all that interested or intrigued by a Puss in Boots movie, by a Shrek spinoff. Um, well, as it turns out, it actually was fantastic. Uh, and 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 while I'll defend myself just a tiny bit in saying, listen, they've done some terrible things. Could you, uh, as a side note, have you guys ever seen the Netflix direct to Netflix Puss in Boots uh, 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 episodic television show? Because it's one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. I was babysitting my ex's kids one time and uh and they put the they were like oh let's watch the puss in boots tv show on netflix and they put it on and i was sitting there and i felt my brain dying in real time and i was like guys i don't think we can watch this i think we got to put on something else because this is dangerous to your mental health okay it's terrible all right it's actual trash so again while i while i beg your forgiveness and all that just remember let's remember what we're dealing with okay now that was a long preamble now i'm gonna stop uh, defending myself or apologizing and simply tell you about the movie itself, okay? Uh, Puss in Boots The Last Wish is phenomenal. Like, it's actually amazingly good. I was I was totally impressed with the movie. The animation is top-notch. Um, it, 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 <laughs> it goes so hard. Uh, a lot of the movie, and I did not expect this at all, but a lot of the movie is lovingly crafted and choreographed fight scenes, which is not at all what I would expect from 
a DreamWorks movie generally, but especially a DreamWorks movie set in the Shrek universe. And by the way, it is set in the Shrek universe. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, it's it's got, there is like an Attack on Titan-esque f uh, rooftop aerial battle in the beginning of the movie. Like one of the opening scenes of the movie is Puss in Boots anime running up a rope while fighting a, a mountain giant that's like swinging a bell on a rope and, and throwing its mountainous fists around. And he's like jumping from the top of, uh, of, of bell towers, uh, onto like the, the, uh, What's it called? The like, the like, uh, clay shingles of a bunch of uh, of, of houses, and and dashing through windows, and rolling through holes, and jumping up into the air, and throwing a dagger. It's deranged. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Why is this? What is? What am I watching? And uh, it is, it is, it is like amazing. It, it's incredible. It's super impressive. And they do this. They do this interesting technique, which uh, I'll note was also present in um, a uh, what's the one Into the Spider Verse, uh, which is that there's a the movie has a variable frame rate, like an aggressively variable frame rate. A uh, variable frame rate is is fairly common in movies as a special effect. You know, somebody throws a punch and it goes slow and they dodge the punch. That's technically variable frame rate. But what I mean in this movie is that uh, in the in the intense action scenes, they, they drop the frame rate significantly so that you are getting like a battle that's happening in like, like gasps. And it actually has this incredible effect of ramping the action up where uh, it adds so much stakes when you combine it with how how well the uh, the action is actually like choreographed between these most of the fight scenes in the movie have multiple characters engaging in the fight scene and it's none of this like one guy standing in the background waiting for his turn they're all fighting each other and brawling and sliding under each other and hitting each other with thrown objects it is incredible okay uh, uh, I was, I was actually blown away by, uh, how well the action was sold in this movie and the variable frame rate, uh, uh, uh style, uh, worked incredibly, incredibly well. Also, and I cannot believe that I'm going to say this, but I think that Puss in Boots, The Last Wish might be the first Dark Souls movie. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, okay? Oh my God, I wish I could show you this. There's a part where, okay, so there's this character in the movie who's a wolf and his name is Lobo and he is the embodiment of death. He is uh, the spirit of death and his weapons are two uh, like dented up metal sickles, okay? And there's a part in the movie where the music is like, Ha, 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 ha. And he puts his daggers out and drags them on the ground behind him, walking towards you, going shh, shh. And there's sparks going behind him as he's dragging his weapons and he charges up to do a swing attack that, that Puss in Boots has to dodge with perfect timing so that he can try to get a parry in. I was like, what is this? I felt myself holding onto my controller and watching for the move telegraphs. In fact, they even make a joke about it. At the end of the movie, I don't, no spoilers, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but at the end of the movie, one of the people that is involved in the final fight uh, goes to do, like, he, he, he goes to do a huge attack and he's like laughing, he's like, ah! <laughs> and then his attack gets evaded and it's used, and his, his strength is turned against him, and then, he, and then he gets knocked off and goes, I shouldn't have telegraphed my attack! I was just like, what the, what the fuck is going on here? How did, who, who did this? Who did this? <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I, I was, I, I actually was losing my mind at that point. Souls fan actually makes the, the first Dark Souls movie and it's fucking puss in boots. Okay.
Uh, uh, okay, so uh, action, phenomenal. The animation is incredibly loving. And uh, there is a bunch more that I want to say about this movie that I liked. Now, uh, another thing that I found that was really enjoyable about the movie was the humor. The movie is, uh, it, it, it is, it is not, uh, okay, so it, it's, it's a little saccharine in some ways, but it is aware of its own, uh, saccharineness, and it's also aware of the, the suite of films that it exists alongside. Uh, DreamWorks movies, um, have many times, I have criticized them and other, and I'm not the only one, have pointed out that, like, uh, DreamWorks movies, they almost ham it up more than Disney movies sometimes with like how feel good a lot of the like endings are where it's just like, we did it. All of our friends got together and through the power of good feelings and friendship defeated the bad thing and everybody's good and now we get to have an end scene where everybody's having a great day and all of the happiness has happened and all you had to do was believe in yourself all along and that's like the the like everything that i just said is like delivered to you via a character looking directly into the camera um the the, the saccharine nature uh, of dreamworks films is is a, a common criticism of a lot of them especially the ones that try to take themselves seriously um, which, you know, they're movies for kids in the long run, but that's not always 100% an excuse. You can still make kids movies that don't overdo it. Um, but uh, in this movie, they're much more aware of it and they play with it, like incredibly so. There is a character, I, again, I don't want to get into spoilers or anything like that, but there's a character in this movie who is a little dog. And the dog is like the most positive character ever um and uh and like he, and in, in a lot of ways it's he's like ob obnoxiously uh obnoxiously positive and, okay he's like a yeah perito uh perito he's he's amazing and we and i love him and um he's like he's like the the good version of donkey like donkey was like kind of making fun uh, of of the like super positive annoyingly positive character but in 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 kind of a mean-spirited way perito is like we want to make the the character who's so uh who's so positive that they're mean that that they're so positive that they're annoying but we want to do it in like a good spirit in like a in the spirit of fun and so like there's a lot of like they make fun of the character but in a very loving way and as a result um even though Perito is like so incredibly o overly positive, he still ends up being an, an absolutely amazing character. And part of the reason for that is because the, uh, uh, the, the, the ways that his positivity engages with the other characters is, uh, is like realistic and, 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 human oddly enough even though there's like barely any human characters in this film um they're mostly animals um it's it's like I, again i don't want to spoil too much about the plot but uh, uh uh there's no part where the the dog gives a, a super positive speech and the uh you know the the steely jaded character is just won over by uh, by oh my god like oh it's so moving no instead it's like at the the way that this character is sold to you is because in a moment of genuine need perito is there for a character who needs him like in a very real way not in like a hammy delivering a feel-good speech it's like Oh, like this character is at their darkest moment and this dog is still there by the side of this character proving that even though he's obnoxiously positive he truly believes in in what he says and puts his his like heart on the line which is really impressive again uh, while there is some there are some parts that still kind of have that like hamminess to it it is not it, it doesn't get in the way of the movie at all um uh also 
uh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I understand why the furries are obsessed with this movie, okay? Uh, I have never, ever seen a movie, uh, that puts so much love into, uh, it's, it's anthropomorphized animal characters. It is actually off the charts, okay? Not even, no, not Zootopia, none of these have come even close, okay? This movie is, it's, it's a little much, okay? And uh, I, I am uh, uh, surrounded by furries constantly because I am a, a, a queer content creator on the internet and I live with fur a furry and all that kind of stuff. So I am, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and also I just, I have no like, well, I, I, you guys know, whatever. The point is you're all in my chat. And uh, uh, so as a result, um, I have an incredibly high tolerance uh, for even what is generally considered to be like cringe furry stuff by other furries, okay? Because you guys will know, uh, furries as a whole uh, are mistreated by the internet at large. They're un they're given an un they're called cringe more than they deserve, okay? But even among furrydom, there are furries uh, that that stand out as extra cringe and boy does this movie ride the line okay it put it pushes it okay they made that wolf the there is like the the wolf is so lovingly animated it genuinely feels like the animator might have been beating off like might have been jacking off while animating the wolf guy i i am like wow this is this is coming on strong, okay? There's like a scene they they have a scene in this movie, okay? Let just just to step away from the wolf for a second. They have a scene in this movie a a a, a scene where it is a femdom a uh, uh, a shaving scene, okay? So uh, the, you know, Puss in Boots and his estranged girlfriend are going back and forth and they're arguing and he's, he hates his beard because he grows this like nasty beard throughout the movie. And then he's like, actually, I've grown into the beard. And then he's like, actually, I hate the beard. And she's giving him shit about it. And then she put, and then he doesn't have his sword anymore. And so she pulls out a little knife and holds it at, at neck point. And she's like, I'm not going to make you beg. And he's like, please, please shave the beard. I hate it. And she's like, what, what's wrong with it? It looks like a possum died on my face or whatever. And he's like, please shave it. And then they have this scene where he, where she's holding his head and gently shaving off the beard of two like anthropomorphized cat characters in like a scene that is so charged with fucking sexual energy. I'm just like, okay, okay, I get it. Fucking Christ, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm like I get I get it I get it the you, you the cats are you the cats are hot holy fuck my dear God oh man it like I said it doesn't cross the line but it comes damn close Jesus motherfucking Christ it is the most it is wow my God they did not hold back at all. Anyway, I do have some critiques for this movie, um, which is the Shrek references in this movie, like were were the truest moments of concentrated cringe. Okay. Uh, uh, oh my my dear God, um, there there are two points in the movie where there is an explicit Shrek reference. And both of them felt like getting the wind knocked out of me, okay? It was like someone walked into the room and just like slapped me in the face with a bag of fucking soggy hot dogs. It was, oof. Oh my God, it was, so one of them is in this incredibly emotionally tense scene where Puss in Boots' life is flashing before his eyes. 
and he's like, his memories are all flashing before his eyes. And one of the memories is him and and Donkey and Shrek doing the Hakuna Matata walk across a log. And I was just like, it was just like, boom. I was just like, oh man. It, it was like 20 vine booms played in my mind when I saw that, that, that like thought. In, in, when I saw that like scene inserted into there, I was just like, oh God, it's terrible. I don't have the vine. I don't think I have the vine boom on my on my list anymore. Do I? No, I don't. I took it off. I took it off a while ago because the vine boom that I had was low quality. But anyway, boom, boom, boom. But then there was a second part. Okay, there was a second part. All right which is at the very end of the movie. At the very end of the movie, they're, they're like, uh, uh, there's a, he's like, it's like, it, it ends, the, the, the movie is sort of like, uh, it's got Puss in Boots' face and he's kind of like, you know, I think it's time. And he looks at the camera to see some of our old friends. And then it starts to zoom out. And then you see far, far away from Shrek 2. And it's like, I was like, oh, come on. Oh my God, what a, t oh, what a, what, again, like I said, it was like somebody just walking in the room and slapping me in the space, face with a lukewarm sponge. Just, oh, the cringe levels were off the fucking chart. And I don't even hate, I don't even, I don't even dislike Shrek. I like Shrek 1 and Shrek 2, but this movie is, it is, there is nothing uh, Sh Shrek, oh wait. I forgot there's a third Shrek reference in this movie. Okay, there's a third one. And it's also annoying, but it's not as cringe uh, because it's a little bit more excusable. And that is, uh, there's like a part where it goes into one of the, vi there's like multiple villains in this movie, but one of the villains goes into their memory and they're super sad and whatever. And then it pans over and Pinocchio from the Shrek movies is like, Oh boy, Shrek, you remember me from Shrek? And I was like, okay, well, it's literally two seconds and side character, Pinocchio's like a real guy. So, all right, you get away with it this time. I, I, it was so minor that I almost forgot about it. The other two though, again, were just like cringe bombs, okay? It was cringe bombs. Cause again, this movie is not like Shrek in any way, even like a little bit. It's it's incredibly over the top in anime. It's uh, re re it's like dripping with style. There's like, and it is goofy. Don't get me wrong. This movie has like, like this movie is constantly throwing jokes at you, but they're jokes that like stand on their own and they're not the same type of jokes that are in the Shrek movie. The, the Shrek is like a movie that is also very funny, but it's like, it's sense of humor is incredibly like, uh, low brow and crass like it's not um it, it's joke style is like farts and burps and like oh he's fat and he sat on somebody and that type of thing and it's not like horrifically offensive or anything but that's like the shrek style of jokes and this movie does not do that this movie's jokes are like uh i'm trying to think of some of like the 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 main jokes okay like the jokes in this movie are like uh uh are like uh, 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 sh the, the cat pulls out her s side blade and it's a tiny little sword that has a cute smiling cat face on the bottom. And she's like, behold, the gatito. And it's like a tiny little cat shaped knife that has like, you know, that's like paw sized. Like that's the type of jokes that are in, uh, that are in this, this, uh, this movie. And, uh, anyway. It's just it, the Shrek jokes are just they feel so out of place and uh, It was a terrible it was a terrible mood ruiner. I'm not gonna lie. Did you ever watch Shrek 3 and 4? No, I uh, Completely avoided watching Shrek 3 or 4. Uh, I saw uh, A couple of clips from Shrek 3 and I was like I never need to see this and I don't want to I don't want this living in my mind and I feel very com confident in that did you watch Puss in Boots 1? No, I don't think so. Was there a Puss in Boots 1? I don't even remember.
Um, but yeah, the this movie is is great. Uh, anyway, I should probably wrap it up here because I don't have a whole lot more to say that I that wouldn't spoil parts of the movie. Um, the animation is genuinely inspired. It is a uh, uh, very like, like explosively colorful. Uh, the the movie totally uh, does not hold back on its um, on its like uh, anime and furry inspirations, which I can respect completely. I love movies that are like unapologetically stylish, stylish, even if it's like risky. Again, making a movie where like with like multiple uh, 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 bo bo like ed absolutely borderline. Uh, 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 f f furry horniness is a bold move, and I can appreciate that a lot. As is deciding to make a, a Dark Souls flavored uh, 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 Puss in Boots movie, where you have like a one-on-one -on -one to the death duel with insanely uh, articulated uh, uh, sword physics. It, very good, okay? Um, it, it is not, don't go into it expecting a spiritual revelation. The movie does not have like an amazingly deep story or anything like that. It's a fairly simple narrative, but this movie uh, is, is incredibly enjoyable to watch from beginning to end. The animation scenes are top notch. The character models are, are lovingly made. Uh, and uh, I really, really, really enjoyed Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. So again, I hope uh, the um, the DreamWorks fandom will uh, will accept my humble apologies and not uh, crucify me. Oh my God! Wait, there's a fourth Shrek reference. I forgot. I could. There was a fourth one that I just remembered. There's a there's a, another part where uh, where a doctor asks him uh, how many of his cat lives he's expended and one of his memories of, of his deaths is um, he's cooking with the gingerbread man. Do the roar! Ouch, anyway, okay, anyway. Go watch, uh, if you, I'm, I'm not even kidding you, as from one Puss in Boots skeptic to another. If you have, if you are somebody who's sitting here going, do I really need to watch Puss in Boots, The Last Witch? Do I really need to watch a Shrek spinoff? Yes, I'm serious, you won't regret it. It is a thoroughly enjoyable movie. Uh, just for the animation alone. If you take absolutely nothing else out of this movie, even if you hate all of the jokes, uh, you will, the animation is so good in this film that it's worth a watch. It is a delight. Uh, anyway, uh, that is my uh, review of Puss in Boots, uh, The Last Wish. Uh, if you found that interesting and compelling, press subscribe and like down below. And let me know your thoughts. If you have animation movies that you think are amazing, uh, uh, that you think stand up to this movie that you think uh, I would like please leave those in the comments down below because I am always looking for new movies to watch I am doing way more uh, movie reviews on my channel uh, these days and also game reviews so if you're interested in that kind of stuff like I said let me know what you want to see me talk about down below and press the subscribe button thank you very very much